Becoming a cloud engineer is one of the best decisions you can make in 2024. It is the perfect job for somebody getting started. It pays really, really well with a median entry level salary of 106,000 per year. You can often work from home because you're doing things in the cloud and it is definitely a future proof career. Now, I'm not going to pretend like it's easy to become a cloud engineer from scratch. It will require some work, but you don't need too many technical skills or be a programming genius either. There are a lot of videos out there, but most of them don't focus on actual beginners from zero, which is what I'm going to to focus on in this video. Today I'll show you how to become a cloud engineer even if you have no specific experience or education. Now I'm going to divide this up into four different parts and each of these parts will be crucial to get a job. If you miss one of them it is not going to work at all. First we have to build a solid foundation and here's where it's crucial to learn the basics of Linux and networking. For example this includes becoming comfortable with command line operations like change directory, ls to list files, make directory, copy, remove, locate, find, and so on. To do this, you can take a free Linux course on their website called Introduction to Linux. It comes with around 60 hours of course material, so pretty long, but not too long, and has a lot of hands-on assignments. It's online and completely self-paced. You don't have to complete everything, but you will get a good foundation, and then you'll learn more as you go along. For computer networking, there are some fantastic courses on YouTube of about 5 to 10 hours to give you the fundamentals quickly. Now, they will take you more than that to fully understand, but I think it's it's definitely worth it and it's a free learning alternative. I also recommend doing some projects, for example on Coursera. It takes just a few hours per project and you will do some basic things in Linux and some cool stuff as well. Now the next part is to learn some programming. There are definitely cloud jobs where you need to be a really good programmer because you'll be building and maintaining software and applications, but for a cloud engineer you may not need as much programming as you might think. You're mainly going to write code to help you do things like automation. One of the best ways to start learning a programming language as a beginner is to start with a beginner-friendly programming language. In this case, Python is a great option. It is beginner-friendly, the syntax is pretty simple to learn, and it's very versatile, used everywhere, and you can do a ton of stuff with it. Now, programming in Python is a huge topic, so what should you actually learn from these, you know, from the programming language itself? There are some great courses online that teach the fundamentals of Python, while also teaching you the fundamentals of programming at the same time. That's perhaps even more important, because once you learn the programming fundamentals, it will be very easy to pick up almost any language and learn that specific syntax because you already have the fundamentals in place. A fantastic course is Python for Everybody on Coursera. Now around 1.6 million people have already enrolled in this course so it's definitely been around a while and it's been battle tested but if you're set on becoming a cloud engineer or at least working in the field I don't think it's the best option. Google has another course called Google IT Automation with Python Professional Certificate. In this one you'll also learn Python for beginners but also some other other key skills. It comes with multiple courses and one of them includes configuration management and working with cloud, all using Python of course. It is highly relevant to you because it's not just a general boring Python course and will be more interesting to you as well. It is also a great way to get some hands-on projects made under their guidance. Now we're at part three and this one is really important. So the next part is to learn a cloud platform. The most popular ones are AWS, Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. As a beginner you don't have time to master all of them and I wouldn't recommend that either. I would just pick one and focus. The choice is up to you but let's see what employers actually look for so that you make the best decision. This website has scraped job listings to see what skills employers actually desire from websites like LinkedIn and if we select cloud engineer we can see that around 28% look for AWS, 24% of job listings are looking for Microsoft Azure and finally Google Cloud Platform slightly behind the other two giants at around 10% of the job listings. Now, I would take this with a grain of salt, as this is only from a very small amount of job listings, but I think it could still be a good indication of which platforms to look for to help make an educated decision. Now, a great way to learn is by preparing for a certification, and they exist for each cloud platform mentioned. The reason why it's so good to do this is because it gives you a structured, easy-to-follow learning path and also guarantees that you don't miss critical skills. Plus, it's also fantastic to have a certification to show employers if you do decide to go all the way there and get certified. Now, you can prepare with online courses or videos, but more importantly, learn and apply through projects and actually doing something. They can be found with a quick Google search, and I do recommend these courses which specifically prepare you for each exam. They are available on Coursera as well. When you get your hands-on experience and play around with the platforms, make sure to use the free trials and the student offers and free credits to your advantage. I'm just saying, do whatever you have to do to get the practice in. You don't have to spend that much money in reality. And also, if you use these cloud platforms, don't forget to set a limit so 
it doesn't just spend all of your money because it can add up pretty quickly. All right, so phase number four. The final phase is learning DevOps. DevOps is a methodology that connects the operations team of a company with a software team to simply put, make things run better. Start with understanding the basics of DevOps and why it's so important for cloud engineering. Spoiler, because it streamlines and automates the work with cloud applications, which can therefore enhance efficiency and reliability. To do this, you'll have to get familiar with some key tools used for CI and CD pipelines like Jenkins, GitLab, and so on. And companies will use very different things. So you don't have to learn every single tool, but also infrastructure as code tools like Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, as well as tools for monitoring and logging. If you're getting started, this is all going to sound like a mess, but it's actually not that difficult and you can understand it once you get there. To both learn and show your skills, you can do small projects like setting up a pipeline for a small application or monitoring a small cloud environment, whatever you want to do. As with all of these things, there are many great courses and certifications to help you accomplish this, even for free with a quick Google search. Cloud is clearly the future and now is a great time to get started. When you are looking for jobs, it will all depend on where you're starting from. From zero, a portfolio and certifications can be really, really helpful. Just keep in mind that the goal is to prove that you have certain skills and show it to employers in whatever way you're doing so. I'll leave a link to some of the resources mentioned in the description and thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.